Hello, everyone, and uh, welcome to the 38th webinar of the European Rewilding Network. Um, I was planning on uh, wishing you all a good morning, but today it is not um, a good morning, uh, neither for Europe nor for the world, as um, we all woke up this morning with the news of war. Um, I can speak in the name of all uh, my colleagues at Rewilding Europe that uh, we are all shocked uh, by the events in Ukraine uh, taking place uh, as we speak. I want to say that um, our thoughts are with the Ukrainian people and uh, especially our team members and uh, partners and also the members of the European Rewilding Network in Ukraine. Uh, my colleague Katya Kurakina, who is the communications manager uh, for Rewilding Ukraine, was uh, supposed to present uh, today, but uh, she is uh, at the moment making sure that her family is safe. So uh, Lorin Holtier, the communications manager of Rewilding Europe, is going to is going to take her place. Uh, now, coming back uh, to the webinar, uh, the star of today's uh, event, as you all know, this is the reason you are here, uh, is the iconic Dalmatian Pelican. And uh, we will hear about the pan-European uh, efforts uh, in boosting their population along the Black Sea Mediterranean flyway. Uh, the initiative that uh, we will present today is called the Pelican Way of Life. Um, and it aims to reduce uh, the threats to the birds uh, and improve their habitat uh, at 27 locations, 27 sites uh, in uh, uh, Bulgaria, Romania, Greece and uh, Ukraine. But given that this initiative is part of the European Union funded LIFE program, uh, exceptionally, we are opening the webinar also to the, to the public. Um, so I guess uh, some of you uh, here with us today do not know uh, a lot about the European Rewilding Network or what it is, so just uh, allow me to, to tell a, a few words about it. Um, so ERN, European Rewilding Network, or ERN for short, um, is a networking tool of Rewilding Europe, um, in a way a community of uh, 77 rewilding uh, initiatives coming from uh, 27 European countries. Uh, it functions uh, as a platform for exchange of knowledge, ideas, uh, best practices, uh, constructive dialogues about practical rewilding, uh, and also it fosters the adoption of uh, rewilding principles and methodologies. In case you want to know more uh, about the ERN or you would like to maybe nominate a rewilding initiative for membership, uh, you can contact me directly a bit later on. I will put my email in the, in the chat box. And now I would like to welcome and uh, introduce our speakers, uh, Deli, Sebastian, Lorin, welcome and uh, thank you for presenting the essential and also urgent work uh, of the Pelicans Way of Life initiative. Uh, Deli Saavedra uh, from Catalonia is the landscape, ma landscape manager of uh, working for Rewilding Europe for already a decade. Um, Sebastian Bugaru uh, is a prominent uh, ornithologist from Romania and is working as a project coordinator at the Romanian Ornithological Society, and uh, Lorraine Holcher, the communications manager of Rewilding Europe, which I already mentioned. Um, for those of you who do not know me so far, uh, my name is May, and um, I am the coordinator of the European Rewilding Network, and uh, I, will, uh, I will also be your, your host. Uh, before uh, I give the word uh, to Delhi, um, who will give us a general introduction and the overview of the initiative, uh, allow me also to mention uh, all of the partners uh, working on this initiative together. So Rewilding Europe is the coordinating beneficiary working with Rewilding Ukraine and Rewilding Danube Delta, uh, Hellenic uh, Ornithological Society, Persina Nature Park Directorate, Bulgarian Society uh, for the Protection of Birds, and the Romanian Ornithological Society. Uh, just a few remarks about our webinar environment. As you have noticed, the audio and video is disabled, so feel free to type in your questions in the Q&A box while the presentation are, are uh, lasting. At the end, we will answer as uh, many as we can, uh, time-wise. In case uh, you are experiencing technical difficulties, do let me know in the chat box. Uh, one problem that can happen uh, is the problem with sound. If that happens, instead of uh, using the Eventbrite link, please uh, do uh, connect uh, via Zoom. 
I also want to say that uh, this webinar is being re recorded and it will be available uh, on Revolve Europe's YouTube channel um, next uh, next week. So before uh, I give the word to to Delhi, uh, I would like to play a short short video for you to get an an impression. back to the presentation. Thanks, May, yeah. and hello, everyone. Yeah, as soon as the presentation is ready, we will continue. Mm -hmm. In fact, what, um, what I'm going to do, I'm going to, to present um, the aims and the main objectives of this uh, LIFE project, and then my colleagues, uh, Sebastian and Lorin, will explain the results so far in the, in the years that we, we have been uh, executing the, this, pro this LIFE project. So here we have the, here we have the presentation. Okay, um, of course, uh, uh, May al already mentioned the, who's behind this project. The, as uh, May said, the coordinated beneficiaries are well in Europe, and we have uh, the, the following associated beneficiaries that you see here on the screen. Rewild in the Northern and Rewild in Ukraine. Then there are three uh, Bear Life partners, the BSPB in Bulgaria, HOS in Greece and SOR in, in, in Romania. And here I want also to add um, the, the collaboration of the Society for the Protection of PRESPA. They are not associated beneficiaries, but they have been working with us and they are supporting uh, this project with uh, the training and also with the expertise, because they have expertise for many decades on pelicans, uh, but they are not associated beneficiaries for the reason they are not in this list. Uh, next. Here you can see uh, the global distribution of the Dalmatian pelican. So it's not a species that you can see the European species, but it's widespread all along the Palearctic or going all the way into Asia and, and, and to China. So you see there's a big population in the area of Kazakhstan and other Asian, Asian countries. And what we have here is just, uh, let's say the corner, the Western corner of the distribution of the Dalmatian pelican is in Europe. And the and is a near threatened according to the according to the red list is considered a near threatened so it's not a globally threatened species but is under some kind of uh, threat. Yeah, you can pass next. Next. So uh, here you have the uh, geographical area of the of the project. This is uh, all these uh, Natura 2000 sites along the flyway of the Dalmatian pelican from uh, Ukraine down to Greece. This is in, in four countries, so in Ukraine, Romania, Bulgaria, and Greece is where we are working. Uh, starting the big, uh, bigger spot that you see here is the Danube Delta, and then there are several uh, SPA, several protected areas in, along the Danube, in Bulgaria, in Romania, other dams, lagoons, and other sites in Bulgaria, and finally also wetlands in Greece, as you can see here. And then in this uh, small table, you see the number of pairs, so how it's been the evolution of the Dalmatian pelican in this area, which is not going bad because it's been increasing in the last years. And you can see also, you can see the trend of the numbers of pairs in the, late, in the last years. Next. Uh, here you see the European breeding population. Of course, this data is already old because uh, this is data from 10 years ago. But if you compare in table, you can see the comparison between the census done in the middle of the 2000s, so in 2005, 2007, and you compare with the 2011, 2012. 
and you can see how the trend in general is to be stable or to be increasing in the different in the different areas. Next. So the main objectives of this uh, life project is to have a flyway approach. Until now, there have been a lot of efforts by all these organizations that we have mentioned and others to protect Dalmatian pelicans in different areas. But uh, what we wanted to do here is to have uh, an approach that was considering a major effort that was considering all the area that the Dalmatian pelicans are using for breeding and their migration. So all these areas, because you, as you can imagine, I mean, uh, Dalmatian pelicans are big birds that today are in one wetland, the next day they are in another wetland or in another country. So if you don't have this common approach, it's very difficult to tackle protection and, and conservation. So that's the reason that we uh, choose and we are working in 27 protected areas, Natura 2000 sites in Romania, in Bulgaria, and also covering the the breeding the breeding sites in the EU, uh, in the EU and Ukraine, and also what we are trying is to build to build this capacity in for to tackle uh, the threats of the Amazon pelican and, and also to improve the conservation in other countries like in Turkey, in Albania, in Montenegro, and in North Macedonia. Next. The main objectives of uh, the LIFE project is, as you can read here, is improve the knowledge on what are exactly the threats, but also which uh, sites are more important for the, for the species, to involve the local stakeholders on conservation. As you know, if you don't work with the local communities, it's very difficult to, to tackle the threats of uh, different species. In that case, for example, illegal killing. So uh, also reduce the mortality from collision with power lines, which is important threat you have seen it in the video. The, many of the animals, they just died uh, because they, they, they crash with the uh, power lines. Uh, also improve nesting conditions and, and to have patrols that can assure that the, the nests and the, and the colonies are safe and has the community pride and raise awareness on the local people and increase the engagement uh, around the, these species and in general around the wetland protection. The main actions for foreseen for this project is uh, first to study the, the status, to study the movements of the, of the Dalmatian pelicans with, uh, with uh, let's say, uh, different systems, but especially through tagging animals for, with uh, GPS uh, colors. Then uh, assess the collision risk with power lines and, as I've said before, install per diverters in key sites. So at least the 10 kilometers of power lines that are protected against uh, colliding by the, the pelicans. Then assess attitudes and see where are the conflicts and how, how can we tackle those, those conflicts and also establish long-term patrolling schemes. Then improve the breeding um, with, uh, you will see nice pictures to artificial platforms, uh, different key sites, key wetlands along the flyway. And then the information campaigns and, uh, and education, especially with uh, crucial stakeholders. The main expected results uh, at the end of the project. So Sebastian and Lorin, they will be explaining what are the results until now. But our main expected results is we are trying to, to track at least 25 individuals with satellite transmitters uh, to improve the knowledge and to be able to protect the key stopover sites, so understand what are the key areas that we really need to protect much uh, with the highest priority. Then um, change the, the attitude of the fishermen that sometimes are the ones that are completely against the mesh and pelican because, of course, they, as, as you saw before, they're eating a lot of kilos of fish every day. So they consider the, 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 the competition to them, and we want to change the attitude of fishermen. Uh, as I said, is to, to improve the breeding and the rustic conditions to building new platforms, at least in, in seven sites of along the flyway, and uh, reduce the disturbance and the mortality with these new patrolling schemes, at least in these uh, seven uh, protected areas. And more results is uh, reduce the collision with power lines because we will set up these systems to, to protect uh, these bird diverters in 10 kilometers of power lines in the most priority areas. Then to have at least 30 experts from Turkey, from Albania, from Montenegro, and from North Macedonia trained in the monitoring and in conservation for the Mesian Pelican, uh, involve uh, relevant stakeholders. And at least we will aim to, to 
be in touch with at least 5,000 local people. Then a lot of education with children and students. We are aiming at 10,000 kids and improving the visitors facility and some key wetlands on the Black Sea coast and along the Danube River. The finance of this uh, project uh, is, as you can see, is almost 2 million euro. Uh, the EU is contributing with uh, 1.3, 75% is coming from the EU uh, life program. And uh, we are the different partners, we are putting the rest of the 25%, uh, almost half a million euro. Uh, that is uh, mainly coming, the co-funding is mainly coming from the Foundation Arcadia. Well, that's it in terms of the aims and the, the main objectives of this project. So I pass the word now to Sebastian to start to explain about results so far. Thank you, Deli, and uh, hello to everyone. Uh, well, my section of the presentation deals with, the, uh, with an overview of the, uh, of the monitoring and uh, research activities and also some of the brief results uh, we had so far. Uh, so one of the main components of the project is to uh, integrate uh, uh, some of the uh, uh, studies on, and the monitoring on the population status in different countries. Uh, and this uh, has been split in several sections. Uh, the first one uh, is the breeding population assessment, which takes place uh, mainly in three countries of the project. Uh, this is Romania, Bulgaria and Greece. Uh, it is worth mentioning that uh, while for Romania uh, all the colonies are being uh, monitored, which is basically the entire breeding population, uh, for the other countries uh, the, those colonies have been included in the project which are um, uh, more in need uh, of conservation actions. Uh, so for instance in, uh, uh, in Bulgaria uh, we have uh, Persina uh, Nature Park uh, where a large part of the breeding population is located. While for Greece, uh, this is uh, the sites which have been included, have been included are um, the ones of the western part of the, of the population, west from the Pindus Mountains, uh, which is the wetlands of uh, Ambrakikos and Mesolonghi. Uh, the breeding population assessment is based on uh, common protocol and monitoring methodologies, which have been established at the beginning of the project. Uh, and the data will be included in the uh, monitoring reports, which uh, will present in detail all the information. Uh, it's worth mentioning again that uh, uh, we have developed a JS database uh, in frame of the project and all the monitoring and research data is being fed into this uh, JS database. Um, so just a few words about the results so far in the first two years of the project. Uh, sorry, can you just step back please on the for the table. Yeah, so for Romania, uh, as you can see, there has already been uh, a, a, a certain level of increase in the breeding population from one year to another, and this is due to uh, uh, the enlargement of one colony mainly. Uh, while for uh, uh, Bulgaria, there has been uh, uh, an absolute record of uh, the, num the number of breeding pairs uh, in the Persina Nature Park in 2021. Uh, in Greece, uh, we have uh, only partial data available for 2020, but uh, there is uh, good information that there has been uh, uh, an increase uh, in the population, in the, in the breeding colony located in the central part of the Mesolonghi lagoons. Next, please. So yeah, just to have a, a couple of images comparing uh, in, in the colony of Tashaul Lake in, uh, in Romania, uh, you can see that uh, compared to uh, 2020 at the upper uh, left photo, uh, the other one has uh, an additional uh, breeding unit already, and we are hoping that this trend will be uh, ongoing. While for Persina Nature Park, the um, uh, breeding uh, population is located on uh, uh, artificial islands, and they proved to be very successful uh, with the record numbers, the record number uh, recorded last year. Next, please. So most of the, uh, the assessment of the breeding colonies in the Danube Delta Biosphere Reserve is uh, being performed using uh, 
um, uh, light aircrafts. This is due to the fact that the colonies are located uh, in most areas in inaccessible places. Um, but they are also, uh, in, in some places, they are also monitored by uh, using vantage points. Uh, Apart from uh, uh, recording the uh, breeding population and uh, assessing the breeding numbers based on apparently occupied nests, uh, the aircrafts are really useful in uh, detecting threats, such as, for instance, in the Danube Delta three years ago, a uh, major uh, ridbed fire has uh, affected uh, the northern part of one, uh, of one colony. Um, and as, as it can be seen in the, in the photos, uh, uh, this is, uh, uh, it gives a completely different view on the, on the large scale of the impact of this uh, reed fires. Next, please. Another component of the, uh, of the action which aims to, to uh, monitor the population status is the, uh, is the International Spring Census. Uh, which is organized in uh, all the project countries and also in several countries uh, coordinated by uh, our Greek partner, HOS. Uh, <clears throat> this is the fourth international spring census. Uh, there have been uh, three more uh, organized previously in previous years, uh, coordinated by the Society for the Protection of Respa. And uh, the main uh, objective is to estimate the proportion of the non-breeding individuals during the breeding season. And basically, to have a, a, a larger, a better overview on the on the population status, and uh, <clears throat> this is done in the manner of a uh, synchronous survey, so a synchronous count, which is being uh, implemented across selected wetlands, uh, with the participation of a very large number of uh, volunteers and also uh, manage man, uh, nature parks and uh, uh, management authorities of uh, protected areas. Uh, the total number for uh, last year, unfortunately, in 2020, we were unable to, to organize it due to COVID restrictions, but in 2021, uh, it has been uh, organized and the numbers that have been recorded are presented on the map. Uh, as you can see, the largest number was uh, recorded in Greece, which is mainly explained by the fact that the largest breeding colony is located at uh, Prespa. Um, and the total number of recorded individuals is uh, 5,478. And all the data will be in detail and um, analyzed and presented in, in the final, final monitoring reports of the project. And just to give you a zoom in on, on how the results look like in, uh, in Romania, <clears throat> as expected, uh, in, in, in red, you can see the, uh, the project sites. Uh, we have uh, covered all the project sites, but apart from these, we have also tried to uh, look into those areas which are important for uh, Dalmatian pelicans, uh, even if they are not included in the project, but they are uh, in the area of distribution. And as you can see, it's, uh, as, as, as expected, the largest numbers uh, of uh, adults have been recorded in the, in the colony areas. But we had uh, quite important information on the presence of uh, um, large congregations in other areas, such as the Lower Old Valley, uh, and also along the, the Lower Danube. Next, please. <clears throat> and the third component, which uh, deals with uh, evaluating the population, uh, is the winter uh, population sense, census. Uh, which is being performed in, uh, uh, in Greece and Albania and Montenegro in uh, November and uh, uh, in Bulgaria and uh, Romania and Ukraine in December. Uh, and this follows the methodology of the International Water Bird Census or the Midwinter Counts, so-called, that are being uh, um, implemented by the BirdLife partners in the region. Uh, and the main reason for uh, doing the uh, winter counts is to uh, establish the winter numbers and also record uh, the uh, survival of uh, juveniles from that year. And again, to identify uh, the larger numbers that concentrate at specific sites and also threats. Next, please.
So yeah, during the, the, the midwinter counts, during the winter uh, censuses that are also complemented with the midwinter counts when the data will be analyzed. Um, <clears throat> uh, there are many uh, important information that uh, are gathered. Uh, and uh, at, at this time of the year, the, uh, the individuals, especially the, the adults already attain uh, the breeding plumage. So uh, it's a bit easier to differentiate between immatures and uh, adults. Um, and also, uh, it is quite important to detect those areas which are um, which are used for uh, uh, for uh, feeding by large numbers. Um, <clears throat> as mentioned before by Delhi, uh, coloring and telemetry is another very important component in order to track the individuals. That can this is an action that can offer a lot of information on the. Um, on the uh, population status and on the survival of individuals and on the level of the exchange of individuals between different uh, subpopulations. Uh, and for this, there have been multiple color schemes established for all the countries in the region at the beginning of the project uh, using different, uh, uh, different colors for each country. Um, up until now, uh, in Greece and Romania, we managed to tag uh, 56 uh, juvenile birds, while in Bulgaria, uh, there have been three trapped uh, individuals. Um, also, a very important component that uh, uh, is giving us a bit of a <laughs> headache because, uh, as you can imagine, uh, it's uh, quite difficult to, to trap uh, adult uh, pelicans. Uh, they are notoriously difficult to, to capture. Um, is the uh, use of uh, telemetry. Uh, we are using uh, GPS GSM trackers, uh, the, the type that are uh, mounted on the wings, uh, together with wing tags, so the Patager ones. Um, this proved to be the mm, most uh, uh, appropriate uh, method uh, after careful analysis with uh, other partners and experts from the SPP. Um, and up until now, three birds have been uh, tagged, uh, two of them in uh, Greece and one in Bulgaria. Next, please. And this is a general map of the, of the movements of these birds. Uh, and as you can see uh, in Greece, in uh, red and yellow, uh, these are the birds that have been tagged in Namrakikos and in Mesolonghi. Uh, and these birds uh, in uh, one year and uh, a bit more than one year have uh, uh, performed uh, local movements. Uh, oh, but the bird in Bulgaria that have been, has been tagged by colleagues of the BSPB in, in Burgas, uh, in Bulgaria, uh, has already delivered a very vast uh, level of information. Uh, the movements uh, have been quite uh, surprising. This is a, a, a sub adult, an immature bird, which has uh, uh, moved a lot uh, between five countries. It has visited also uh, uh, several uh, uh, breeding colonies in the region, in, in Romania, in uh, Bulgaria, in Greece, uh, and has traveled in 10 months more than 4,600 kilometers. But unfortunately, um, uh, last December, uh, it has uh, collided with a power line in, in Greece. And uh, while it's uh, uh, a pity that we have, we have lost this individual and uh, the, the, the data that it was uh, uh, providing us, uh, it is quite important uh, to have this information that uh, the GPS trackers are providing, which, has, which, is, which are the more, more uh, uh, important power lines uh, that can pose threats. Next, please. Which leads us to uh, the conservation, the direct conservation actions of the of the project, and uh, indeed one of the more most important is the is to assess the the collision risk with power lines. Uh, uh, by performing a risk uh, assessment at uh, key sites. Uh, uh, so, as I was mentioning, the mortality of not only Dalmatian pelicans but also great white pelicans has already been recorded in uh, several sites in Greece, Bulgaria, and Romania. 
uh, the reports will be uh, in each country uh, handed over to the national electricity distribution companies or the local distribution companies, uh, followed by the installation of bird diverters in those sections which uh, uh, pose the, more, uh, the most risk. Next, please. Another conservation action that uh, uh, we are trying to implement is uh, 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 performing patrolling in, uh, in several sites. Uh, as many of you know, is uh, one of the main threats of the, uh, for, the, for the breeding success of Dalmatian pelicans is uh, the disturbance at uh, breeding sites. Uh, so patrolling has been set up in place and it is in place and is ongoing in uh, two project sites in Greece, four project sites in Bulgaria and one site in Romania. And it, it, it is also complemented by the uh, regular patrolling which is being performed by the uh, management authorities of the, for instance, uh, Persina National uh, Nature Park uh, in Bulgaria or Mesolonghi uh, and Ambrakikos and uh, the Danube Delta Biosphere Reserve Administration, for instance, for, for Romania. Um, we are also trying to evaluate the attitude of the local stakeholders by uh, performing a series of interviews in all of the project countries uh, in order to find out which are the potential conflicts and in which sites in, in fisheries uh, that could uh, eventually lead to potential persecution and try to avoid it as much as possible. And finally, uh, another important uh, conservation action, uh, which uh, is also very successful, uh, is the provisioning of, uh, of uh, uh, artificial platforms uh, for dimension pelicans for breeding and roosting. And this conservation action is being implemented in Bulgaria and Ukraine. Uh, um, and up until now in Bulgaria, there has been a new wooden platform constructed in Persian Nature Park in collaboration with the management authority, while all the other existing uh, platforms have been uh, maintained and renewed. Uh, furthermore, last year, uh, there have been new, uh, two new floating platforms that have been installed in Bulgas wetlands, and also uh, with the help of volunteers, uh, the existing one uh, and the artificial island has been uh, have been renewed uh, in this area. Uh, while in Ukraine, there has been a new floating platform installed at Kartar Lake, which we hope it will be successful in the future. So yeah, just a couple of uh, pictures with the with the artificial wooden platform that is uh, uh, the upper left uh, part is. Uh, located in uh, Persina Nature Park, uh, while uh, the one on the le below left uh, is one of the artificial uh, islands in Burgas, which has been uh, renewed. Uh, and the, uh, the other photos are of the, the plat platforms that are uh, being set up in, uh, in Burgas and in Ukraine. These are uh, mounted on plastic barrels and are floating. Uh, and finally, the next slide will be a, a slide of a video uh, showing how the artificial structure at uh, uh, Persina has been uh, constructed. Thank you. Welcome everyone, also from my side. Uh, as May explained, I'm taking over today from uh, Katja, um, who's currently uh, well, in Ukraine, Ukraine 
um, finding a way to stay safe. Uh, but luckily, she was able to prepare this presentation. Um, so I will present uh, the key elements that she included. Um, and of course, uh, we'll explain a bit more about it. Uh, waiting for the presentation to start. Thanks, May. Just getting to the correct sheet. So uh, as you already heard in the beginning, there's quite some focus on, on communication as well. So not only the protection part and the platforms, um, but there is a part of enhancing community pride, involving local stakeholders and raising awareness, education, uh, quite some efforts to, to get everyone on board and support the comeback and the um, protection of these amazing birds. Um, there we go. Thank you, May. Uh, so first of all, general public awareness. Uh, we want to raise the knowledge about Dalmatian pelicans, to get support of, for all the actions that we do, um, and uh, in particular also ensure networking, because this is multi-country. It's the whole uh, area that we are focusing on. Um, and also an international level. So for this, we developed uh, several communication tools, including a special website, livepelicans.com. This is where we update everyone who wants to know more uh, with stories from the field, but also the bigger results uh, that we want to share. And social networks, especially Facebook and Instagram, are particularly um, doing well because this is sharing pictures. This can be pictures of the beautiful bird itself, of the Dalmatian pelican, but also all the work that is being carried out in the field. Media, interest, so we have press releases, uh, press trips, although because of COVID they were um, a bit less last year, but there's a, enough interest also on national level. Uh, people want to know more about the Dalmatian pelicans and networking with other projects. Next, please. Education. Next generation, uh, coexistence with the uh, Dalmatian pelicans and uh, through children, we also reach out to parents, of course. So we present, uh, we, we organize lectures and presentations. There's a special competition in Bulgaria, also at universities. Uh, we have a volunteering camp. So we focus, or not only focus, but in some areas, we focus on nine to five to 15 years old. Um, we take them, it's not only lectures and all, not only talking, but of course we want to show kids as well to uh, what's going on and uh, take them into the field uh, have them get the experience and for seeing those birds um, and also the the habitat they are living in a lot of materials are being produced and there are special youth clubs established in some of the project countries next please here you see a camp in bulgaria last year Nice example of uh, a lot of uh, looking at birds <laughs> and seeing it with their own eyes. So next, please. Um, also, Bulgaria, uh, we go to the schools. We bring uh, a lookalike pelican, um, which is, of course, very interesting also to actually see how big they are, um, especially when they are in front of you at the table. Um, and the kids are looking at it and, and can touch it and hear more about it. Next, please. Local communities. We talked about fishermen, for example. Um, so our focus is to enhance coexistence. Um, so uh, decreases, so that the disturbance of the nests are decreased. And we also want to generate the sense of pride of having this amazing bird in your area. For this, we organize boat voyage, uh, Danube in, in Bulgaria and, and Romania. So we bring people into the area again. Um, we raise awareness. We have a volunteer uh, group, Re Rapid Reaction Corp, uh, that is also responding, that is monitoring, that, do, that is doing a lot of work. We organize festivals uh, and information trips. So we bring people to the area, tell more about what we do and why we do it. Next, please. Um, another beautiful example of showing the birds to uh, kids and uh, raising awareness in Bulgaria last year. Next, please. Festival, beautiful one. A uh, lot of uh, interest as well. And we also want to make it playful and make it fun. So it's not just about sharing information. It's a lot about interaction. Next, please. 
and we produce materials so people start to recognize it. Uh, we have t-shirts, we have a lot of information panels, uh, leaflets, stickers, um, pins, well there's a whole list here. And this is what we especially use on a local and national level when we go to schools, but also when we go to festivals or events. Next, please. This is an example of one of the information boards that is on the site so people know um, what we do, why we do it, uh, and get to know more about the Dalmatian Pelican. This is an information panel that we also have in all the areas, so that's uh, 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 good to know. Um, stickers, nice examples. Thank you. Next one. Tourism uh, promotion is, of course, also very uh, important because it provides an alternative income for local communities. Uh, watching birds, birding uh, uh, guides, um, tourism infrastructure is what we are also building, advertising, uh, promoting the area, promoting the importance of the Dalmatian pelican and healthy nature, healthy uh, wetlands. Next, please. Very important um, because you cannot always see it with your own eyes. So we also focus a lot on photo and video missions, bringing, uh, visualizing everything, all the, 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 the animals, the areas, to the, also the international audience. So we prepare special videos with big media, um, YouTube videos, but also uh, photo missions. That was just one. I think the next slide is also about that. Uh, to show the beauty of the bird. Um, yeah, so there was just now we finished um, a, a photo mission in Greece. You can even see the last examples of that on, um, uh, on our Instagram already. Uh, some behind the scenes materials because we want to take people with us on this journey um, of the whole project and, this, uh, and the Dalmatian pelican. That's it from my side. Uh, if there are any questions, please do share. I, um, I hope I replaced Katja in a, a good enough way. Um, I'm sure she can even tell much more about it, but it, I hope this at least shows what we're all doing here. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Lorraine, so much. Before we go to the, to the Q&A, and uh, let's allow some time for the, for the people to type in their questions. We do already have two. But from my side, I have a question for Sebastian. What was the most challenging uh, thing that you faced during the implementation of the project so far? Well, for, the, uh, for our part, as the, the uh, partner in, in the project, one of the most challenging things is, is the trapping of, uh, of the birds. Unfortunately, we didn't succeed yet, but uh, this is something that we are aiming to, to focus on uh, actively in the next, uh, in the next uh, period. Uh, because it requires a large amount of time and a large amount of uh, field knowledge and the techniques are not uh, universal, so you need to adapt in the field and so on. So uh, this is probably one of the more uh, challenging because it's also very, very unpredictable. Uh, there is a question from Julia. Uh, I, would love to, uh, I would love to know more about the artificial islands for pelican breeding. Did you see improvement in breeding? Did the pelicans prefer them from natural islands? Yeah, this, this is a very good question. And uh, well, uh, Artificial islands and artificial structures uh, like platforms are uh, quite a large subject because uh, these species would uh, readily uh, uh, adopt uh, those structures which prove to be safe in an area where they would uh, naturally breed but don't have a breeding substrate. So uh, until now in the region, like uh, such as for instance in uh, Greece and in Bulgaria and in Romania, different types of uh, structures have been uh, uh, set up, uh, ranging from the uh, wooden platforms such as the one in Persian Nature Park to uh, uh, wooden platforms that have been used to increase uh, natural islands in, uh, in the Danube Delta uh, Lagoon area and also complete uh, uh, artificial, newly created artificial islands such as for instance in Kerkin. So uh, the, the answer is yes, they, they would, uh, it, it really does improve breeding. Um, it's hard to say if they would prefer them from natural islands, if they, if they are safe enough 
if they are not flooded during adverse weather conditions, uh, if they are safe for a longer period of time, usually the birds use these areas, uh, these platforms, these structures for uh, roosting, uh, maybe for one or more years, and then gradually they will start breeding. Um, the only drawback would be that once you start implementing a measure like this, you need to maintain uh, management because uh, once you basically create, let's say, uh, a breeding population in an area, then you have to keep managing uh, those uh, platforms because they get destroyed in time, uh, like naturally destroyed uh, by, uh, by weather. Uh, so they need to be uh, kept in good condition. Uh, so yeah, uh, there, is a, there is a very comprehensive uh, publication uh, coordinated and prepared by uh, uh, the experts at the Society for the Protection of Prespa, uh, namely Yorgos Katsadorakis, uh, with help and uh, input from all the countries uh, that, that have already done this. Uh, and this publication is available if, I, if I, anybody needs it. If I just get an email address, I can, I can send it even after the webinar. Okay, uh, there are more questions coming, uh, coming in in the queue. Uh, there's one from Jocelyn uh, from Dudavat. In the past, the use of harness for telemetry on Dalmatian pelican revealed having an impact on breeding probability of the individuals. Uh, what about the new system on the leg? Any adverse effects? Is the frequency of data satisfying? Uh, well, this system is not uh, on the leg. I don't know of any system on the leg. We uh, are using the patagial uh, tag that is uh, fixed on the wing. Uh, up until now, we didn't have any information because uh, there was we didn't have enough uh, seasons uh, for us to observe if the adult birds uh, are breeding or are not breeding. Uh, and if this can, uh, the, the presence of the tag can uh, influence the, uh, the breeding uh, probability. Uh, and we also have a very low number of uh, tags uh, yet installed. But uh, it, they, are, uh, they have been considered uh, to be much better than, uh, than harness uh, uh, mounted uh, transmitters because the harness mount transmitters are uh, can be really uh, easily destroyed by birds. And also because the harness, due to the anatomy of the, of the pelican, uh, can cause uh, uh, abrasion in time and uh, do damage to, uh, to the individual. Um, so th this, this has been already uh, used uh, quite a lot in, in vultures. And also it has been adopted in pelicans, in greater pelicans in, uh, in uh, Israel and in Dalmatian pelicans in uh, Greece, uh, previous to the project. So uh, the, the, the more birds we, we manage to tag, uh, and we have information that the method is quite safe, but we, there will be new information available once we get enough data. And there's another question from Andre. It says, hello, Andre from Montenegro, asking if there will be an opportunity for GPS tagging in Montenegro and or necessary training for such activity. Yes, again, this is a very good, uh, it's, it's, it's good to, to bring that up. Uh, and, well, the setting up of any kind of transmitter requires training, but of course the, the setting, setting, I mean, mounting a, a potential uh, uh, tracker on, uh, on a bird or a, a wing tag, uh, requires specific training uh, because uh, it involves fixing the, the tag to the, to the wing uh, and the uh, well, person who is doing it needs to know very well what, uh, uh, what the anatomy of the bird is and how to set up this uh, track in order to uh, not, uh, not to, not to uh, um, do any damage to the, to the wing itself. Um, I don't know uh, for now for the opportunity for the GPS tagging in Montenegro, but I think uh, this needs to be discussed in detail uh, with the colleagues uh, at HOS. So I think, yeah, this is a, an open discussion. Uh, we can get in touch and, and discuss this and together with the uh, partners from, uh, from Greece as well. Uh, the question from uh, Bernice uh, Guinel. 
uh, many places. <laughs> How do you manage to reduce the conflicts uh, with local communities, for example, with uh, fisheries? Does it imply uh, new practices from fishermen? Do you also cover the costs of some damages caused by pelicans? And do you manage to reduce the damages? Well, this is a very vast subject. <laughs> I, I mean, uh, yeah, it, it, it's, it's a, well, as there have been lots and lots of publications uh, dealing not only with uh, uh, pelicans, but also obviously with cormorants, which are the, uh, the main species that is targeted by these conflicts uh, across Europe, actually. Um, and uh, what needs to be mentioned is that uh, for instance, for the wetlands along the, along the long, lower Danube, uh, these are natural wetlands, uh, very vast areas, uh, several hundred to uh, thousand of hectares, uh, that are basically natural lakes that have been converted to fisheries uh, throughout the 20th century during the communist times. Uh, currently, they have like, uh, they have a, a, a status which involves not only a, a commercial fishery, but they are also protected areas. So the situation here uh, in terms of uh, avoiding the conflict uh, is uh, favored by the fact that they are protected areas and the, the, the fish eating birds need to be protected in those areas. So this is something that is being uh, uh, brought up to the, um, to the fishery administration uh, usually. Uh, there have been some uh, uh, damage uh, costs evaluations uh, in the past. There are, I, as far as I know, in Romania, they are not implemented now, but there are some uh, governmental schemes in order to, uh, to cover some of the, these damages based on studies that evaluate uh, how big the damage is, let's say. Uh, but the, the situation is rather different than uh, in than, for instance, in intensive fisheries, where, uh, where the ones that uh, basically invest, uh, they are uh, entitled to say that they uh, are recording losses because of fish eating birds, because all these, uh, all the fish stocks uh, have been introduced by themselves. And this is very different from natural wetlands or semi-natural wetlands, uh, where the, the, there has to be like a a, a, a balance between uh, fishing, commercial fishing activity, and maintenance maintenance of uh, of uh, natural uh, uh, of the natural ecosystem. So it it really uh, th there are some practices uh, which have been used in the past, especially for uh, for cormorants, as far as I know, but uh, which are a bit more problematic, especially in intensive fisheries, because uh, they would dive, uh, not like the, the pelicans, and they would chase uh, fish underwater. So there have been some artificial structures that have been uh, set up in place in these fisheries, uh, and they prove to be quite effective, but unfortunately not in uh, natural, natural large scale wetlands. Uh, I think it's, uh, it's, it's a matter of uh, continuous lobbying and uh, having indeed uh, some schemes in order to uh, reduce the damage, but at the same time uh, making sure that the fishery, uh, that the investors in the, in the fishery uh, uh, understand that uh, there is a certain amount of, uh, uh, of, let's say, loss, which is actually not a loss, but a, uh, a part of the fish, which is part of the natural ecosystem and being consumed by the birds. So, yeah, it's, it is a bad subject. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Sebastian. Um, at the moment, we don't have any, any more questions. Uh, so I would like to uh, close the event uh, and say that uh, if anyone uh, needs additional information or wants to contact Deli, Lorene or Sebastian, uh, you can email me and uh, I will uh, send them um, the, the relevant emails. Um, so uh, my email is in the in the chat box, uh, and um, I would like to thank uh, all the attendees for your interest in today's topic, and uh, Deli, Sebastian, and Maureen for telling us um, uh, a lot about the pelican way of life and uh, 
and the achievements so far and the and the plan and the plans for the future. Uh, we wish you all the luck with the with the further work, uh, Sebastian. And um, I think maybe we can repeat a similar webinar at the end of the project to to hear more about the the final results and the increase of population that you will manage to do. Um, any final remarks uh, from our presenters? No, thank you. I just if if anybody is interested in any of the subjects, you can also uh, email me directly. Uh, contact details are on the, um, on the SOR webpage. So uh, I'm, I'm glad to, to discuss any of the subjects that have been raised. Uh, thank you, Sebastian. Uh, oh, there's a question here, just uh, uh, how many attendees uh, were we? Uh, this is not uh, an information that is usually shared, but uh, at one point we were all together 30. However, this, is, uh, this webinar is going to be on YouTube and uh, once uh, we 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 put the video there then um, many more people attend uh, i also got uh, emails from people who couldn't make it today but are very interested but we're very interested in the topic uh, i wish you all a pleasant rest of the day and uh, thanks again goodbye thank you bye bye thank you may